wipe your whiskers. Secret Eaters is back. <gasps> With a quarter of the UK now clinically obese, we hold the crown as the heavyweight champions of Europe. <gasps> 15 stone two. <gasps> 17 and a half stone. Five and a half stone heavier than, than I want to be. Just how many of us are in denial about what we really eat? I'm going wrong somewhere and I just don't know where. I eat healthy things. I don't understand why I've got an eight stone. It's literally like carrying a human being on my back. Our PIs and covert cameras have been catching the nation scoffing everywhere. And I mean everywhere. I've got a tracker on Tracy's car. Even if we lose her in traffic, we can find out where she is. And when you see what we've uncovered, They're on the, moon. the truth will really knock you out. Oh yes, in the Secret Eaters incident room, we'll be plating up the truth and nothing but. Surprise! Oh, Hello ladies! Oh, no. Because if you really want to lose weight, you need to know how you're putting it on. I just want to die now. Oh, please don't put it in your mouth. Please don't put it in your mouth. It's going in. Are we hiding the true extent of our mindless eating from our loved ones and ourselves? I can't believe you did that. This is Secret Eaters. I've got to take you on the chin, have not I? Really? Which one, now? <laughs> oh, no, very nice. <laughs> I'm in Hornchurch, Essex, on my way to visit a married couple who don't understand why they've piled on the pounds. 56-year-old Murray and 55-year-old Helena have been happily married for 22 years, but they've recently developed a weighty problem they just can't ignore. There are times that I look at myself in the mirror and I'm, I'm actually staggered. <laughs> compared to how I used to be, it is devastating. This is the worst I've ever been in my life. We think, oh, God, why have I got so fat? For most of their married life, Helena and Murray have been slim, fit and healthy. Their unwelcome weight gain has left them completely baffled. I eat small meals, but I still pile on the pounds. I'm getting all the, the nutrition I need, and I'm not really eating that much. I'll have a healthy start to the day with, with some porridge or, or some cereal. It mystifies me that I have gained so much weight so quickly. Just think about this. Apparently, being in a relationship is the single biggest cause of weight gain. And according to a recent poll, 62% of people put on up to a stone after falling in love. <laughs> it certainly happened to Murray and Helena. As their love has grown, so has their body mass. They now need help. Hello, Hello. are you Helena? I'm Helena. Hello, I'm Hello. Anna. Hello, Hello this week. Come in. Come on Come in, in please, yeah, thanks. Thank you. So, what are you eating during the day at the moment then? I mean, are you having three square meals? Yeah, I have three square meals. I'll have what I consider a healthy breakfast, cereal, whatever. Possibly then have some brunch before I go to work. I work late shifts. Oh, OK. I'll need some lunch when I get to work. But it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, fairly healthy. And... OK, all right. Might have a small bowl or food wheat or a slice of toast, not both. I have my lunch around 12, 30 ish. Sometimes, if I'm good, I take uh, one sandwich I've made. Okay. And then I come home and I might do fish fingers and potato wedges or whatever. But... So, from what you're telling me, really not. Yeah. Your wife's not eating yeah. that I, much. I can't no, believe no. that anyone could put weight on eating the quantities yeah. that Elena does. You are a petite woman, but you were very, you're very small. Yeah, well, slim. I was nine stone. What's happened, do you think? Well, I put it down to age. Partly. What, your hormones, hormones, do you reckon? Hormones, yeah. Early menopause. I don't know whether that contributes to it or not. So you've got menopause mm. going on. Mm. Do you exercise? No. no. So you don't really. Mm. What about you, Murray? <clears throat> well, I, I can't run anymore. Did you used to run? I've actually completed London Marathon three times. Mm. You're kidding? No, yeah. that's true. Now you struggle to even mm. just sort of take the dog yeah. for a bit of a walk or yeah, go to the Yeah, I can mm. walk him along. But um, I can't even break into a truck. Murray works as a secure vault officer. It's a sedentary job, but that hasn't stopped him trying to shift the middle-aged spread. 
The diets that I've embarked on that have helped me to, to lose weight, albeit only temporarily, are practically starvation diets, where I've, I've barely eaten there anything and then gone off on eight-mile runs. He doesn't know what else he can do to get back on track. I can't really see that eating anything different than what I do now is going to make any difference. Helena works as a pharmacy assistant, but when she's not working, she likes a spot of home cooking. I try and cook from scratch, like chicken, jacket potatoes. I think it's fairly healthy diet. She's also at a complete loss to explain her weight gain. I don't eat every meal, I often miss meals, because I'm not always hungry. I'm obviously doing something wrong. And I, you know, some things you think, well, yeah, because you eat too many sweets or whatever. But it can't be just that. It's got to be more, more to it. It's the moment of truth, yes. Lena. Mm. You're 12 6. Murray, hop on. Thanks for the, the scale, yeah. You are just over 17, 17 and a half, half stone. Five and a half stone heavier than, than I want to be. Exactly. Mm. You're looking a little bit worried then. What are you thinking? Well, no, I'm just <laughs> thinking the rate I'm increasing my weight, it's something like two stone a year. It's going to yeah. be 25 stone by the time I'm 60 if, if, it, if I carry on at this rate. This is it. It's this crunch time. It is crunch this time. This needs to be taken in hand and sorted out. Murray and Helena have agreed to let us monitor their every mouthful for five days. We've put cameras in the kitchen, the lounge and in the dining room. Every meal would be measured, every morsel accounted for. I need to ask you not to change your right. eating habits. Right. Okay. There's no, no point, point in, in yeah. us not really seeing yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Is it a deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely, Certainly. yeah. Yeah. You're on. To get an idea of what they think they eat, we asked Murray and Helena to complete a food diary for a week. Murray recorded eating about 3,000 calories, starting with a large portion of porridge. In Helena's diary, she said she eats small, regular meals, such as soup and jacket potatoes, estimating her daily calorie intake as 1,740. But the surveillance doesn't stop when they leave the house. We've recruited our very own super sleuths, private investigators Duncan Mee and Cameron Gowlett. They'll be using state-of-the-art surveillance tools to spy on Murray and Helena's eating habits. There it goes. This kind of surveillance is quite hard. You've got to keep your distance but not lose them. No rubbish bag will go unturned. With our round-the-clock recording, we'll find out once and for all if Murray and Helena are hiding the truth from themselves and each other. Are they secret eaters? It's 7pm on the first day of surveillance. Helena is busy in the kitchen while Murray's taking things easy. From a couch potato in the lounge to jacket potatoes in the kitchen, True to her word, Helena is cooking from scratch. After 30 winks, Murray wakes up peckish. What's that in there, then? What? Oh, what dogs, isn't it? Oh, looks like Murray's taking the dog for a walk. No, not you, Max. To go with the jacket potatoes, Helena serves up chicken wings and a pork rib. Very healthy. Oh, I'm a That's right, Murray. Those jalapenos certainly shouldn't get you in a pickle. After dinner, it's time to settle down in front of the telly. Hold on. Helena's now on the prowl. Trying to be a bit of an arrow, Hannah. Helena helps herself to a chunk or three of arrow before handing the lion's share to daughter Hannah. But to be fair, Helena is just like 72% of other Brits who have all enjoyed a cheeky chocolate bar in the last six months. 
so far there's not enough evidence to solve the puzzle of their proliferating poundage. Further investigation is needed to get the full picture. But it's not just Murray and Helena we're spying on. Breakfast, undoubtedly the most important meal of the day. And the number one choice for millions of us Brits is the hearty full English. So today, we've decided to make a pit stop with our hidden cameras at a trucker's cafe just off the M25. Here, the road hogs are loading up on their usual fare. But how many will take delivery of the fried extras we've put on the menu? I'll have an uh, extra sausage and extra bacon. Uh, I'll have a nice mushroom. There's not much room on the plate for that extra freight. We'll be hanging around to find out how many of this breakfast club succumb to temptation and overfill their fuel tanks. Coming up. Surprise! There are some shocks in store for Helena and Murray. This is phenomenal. Oh my God. As they finally face up to the truth about what they've really been eating. I'll take it on the chin, and I? Really? Which one now? <laughs> It's been shown that being happily married can result in people gaining as much as a pound in weight every year. Since Helena and Murray married 22 years ago, they've put on 146 pounds between them. But neither think they overeat. I think that my diet includes all the things that you need. It mystifies me that I have gained so much weight so quickly. I don't eat every meal, I quite often miss meals, because I'm not always hungry. To get to the bottom of their mystery weight gain, Murray and Helena have been under round-the-clock surveillance for five days. We've been monitoring every morsel they munch at home and had private investigators tailing them. Helena's just snuck down the shops and bought some sweets and chocolate. All this to discover if the couple are eating more than they realise. Helena and Murray now believe that the surveillance is over, but our covert cameras are still rolling. I mean, I used to, I used to ride along here to work years ago. Oh, yeah. um, on the 8.30? Yeah. Took me life in my hands. Yeah. We've told this trusting twosome that they're going to spend the night in this swanky London apartment before meeting our dietitian Lynn for a chat the next day. And this is one pork pie we're happy for them to swallow, because what they don't realise is this is an apartment with a difference. We've rigged the entire place with hidden cameras and erected a fake wall. Behind these painted burgers is the real deal, our incident room. Here, every scrap of evidence showing their surreptitious scoffing is laid out. Loitering on the street to await their arrival is our accomplice. Hiya! Her job is to greet the gullible guests and guide them into our ambush. They're blissfully unaware that all is not as it seems. And they're about to be served up something of a surprise. Surprise! You two weren't expecting this. No, and I've got my shorts on, and I wouldn't have had them on if I. You've let us down, Murray. Come on in. Welcome to your very own incident room. This is just a snapshot of some of the things you've been eating. Really? This oh, is that's just... my side. This is your yeah, side. Yeah, there's been some deep undercover work going on. There's here, been a yeah. lot of deep undercover work. We have been watching you two 24 7. We've got evidence. Your actual pizza box. This is phenomenal. Oh, my God. All in red. Oh you like to sport a short. But it's oh comfort, isn't God. it? When you're overweight, you've got to go for comfort. Look, I'm about six months pregnant then. Isn't it? Were you aware that you were being watched 24-7? No. Would you like to know a little bit more yeah. about what yeah, we I mean, did I find out? Well. Come this way, please. 
I've got to take it on the chin, haven't I? Really? Which one, now? <laughs> oh, no, very nice, isn't it? Very... And Murray, are you ready? Yeah. OK, let's have a look at what, what you've been getting up to. First to face the fattening facts is Murray, who claims to be mystified by his weight gain. I'm getting all the, the nutrition I need, and I'm not really eating that much. Is it usually a, a, a healthy start to the day for you? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that's what I think. Hmm. What should we say? <laughs> yeah, all right. Ex-marathon runner Murray starts the day with a power breakfast. Special cake. Very, very good for you. Yeah. All good athletes know bananas are high in potassium and a good source of energy. Now, there's something missing from this performance-enhancing breakfast. What is that, Murray? That cream there. Double, Top it off. double cream. Of course, cream if you want to go faster. And finally, to balance out the bowl, a healthy dollop of fruit preserve. Oh, and some raspberry jam. Nice. Forgotten all about that. With that marathon breakfast, Murray certainly won't be running on empty today. Later that night, private investigator Cameron is staking out Murray's workplace. Dear, oh dear. Yeah. When he spots a shady-looking shipment. Are you delivering the pizza to this workplace here? Oh, I am, yeah. Uh, what, what is it, pizza? Uh, it's two large pizza, two side orders and one drink. So, I've replicated the order that's gone into Murray's workplace, and it's uh, two large barbecue Texas pizzas, bacon, meat, cheese on that, and garlic bread here. What I need to do now is work out how much of this Murray's had. Uh, please stop. That's awful. It's time to call an informant on the inside. Hey, what has Murray eaten today? He's had three cheese and piccalilli sandwiches, a microwaveable hot dog, two bags of kettle chips, one apple pie for two. Right. Murray. What a grass. <laughs> uh, three slices of meat feast uh, pizza. OK. And two slices of garlic bread. Right, OK. Wow. Murray, Murray, Murray. Incredible. That breakfast that you were making yourself there, the healthy cereal. Yeah, yeah. It's low-calorie cereal, isn't it? <laughs> all, <laughs> all healthy, good for you. So the more, more the merrier, I think. Well, shall we find out? So let me introduce you to our expert dietitian, Lynn Garten. Hi, Murray. How are you yeah, doing? Yeah, nice to meet you. That bowl of cereal there contains two and a half thousand calories. So you've had your calorie intake before you've even got That's... out of the door. <laughs> I, would, I would never, ever, never, ever have believed that. Lynn's broken down Murray's bumper breakfast bowl to see just how those calories mounted up. This amount of cereal, which is four times what is recommended on the label, 450 calories. Murray then added semi-skimmed milk, which is 184 calories. Half a large pot of double cream. Murray then added this banana. He then added two very large tablespoons of jam. By adding this amount of jam, it's like adding the calories you'd find in these two chocolate bars. I thought I was doing OK. You uh, thought you were doing OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, you had all your snacks and your pizzas. Yeah. So in that one day, Lynn, how many calories did Murray have? Nearly 8,000 calories in that one day. Which is the equivalent of not just one day... Yeah. ..not two days, but three days' worth of food. Yeah, totally astonished. I really am. Whilst Murray digests the unsettling truth of his calorie consumption, it's Helena's turn for a dollop of reality. Her unwanted weight gain is also a complete puzzle. I eat small meals, but I still pile on the pounds. Lena, you are the main cook, it's fair to say, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. You like to cook from scratch, is that yeah, right? Yeah, I do when I can, yeah. But you try and use healthy ingredients. Yes. Yeah. Shall we have a look? Yeah, go on. On Monday, Helena had invited friends for dinner and got busy cooking the godfather of Italian dishes, lasagna. Look at that belly. 
For dessert, Helena consults her cookbook and finds some good fellas to accompany her lasagna. Following the recipe to a tea, Helena whips up some tiramisu. Get a mouthful Not happy with the recommended quantities, Helena goes on a reckless rampage with the ingredients. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> At 6 p.m., Helena's mob turn up. And they take a contract out on that lasagna. The garlic bread is a sitting duck. And the tiramisu gets its just desserts. This lot are clearly in the business of waste management. Healthy? Home cooked? Well, uh, it's home cooked. That tiramisu didn't really go to no, plan. I didn't. But you more than doubled oh, no. the ingredients. I didn't realise I had more than doubled it. It was just to add volume more than. so it looked better. Let's just find out. When you decided to go off piste and change the recipe for that tiramisu, what did it actually mean in terms of calories, Lynn? Helena, each one of those tiramisu pots contained 1,295 calories. In that particular day, Helena, you actually got through 4,440 calories. You ate for two women. Oh, my God. 4,440 calories. Awful, awful. I always thought I didn't eat very much. It all makes sense, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's shameful. Let's face it, when it comes to children and healthy eating, they can be really, really tough customers. So how can we persuade our little darlings that green is good? Jane Ogden, Professor of Psychology at the University of Surrey, thinks there could be a simple solution. And I'm going back to school to find out what it is. So why are we here? What are we going to try and do today? Well, what we're trying to do is to run an experiment. It's based on what supermarkets do to us all the time. And they can get us to buy whatever they want us to buy simply by putting it in the right place. And there's no reason, really, why you can't do that with healthy foods as well as unhealthy foods. These children at this South London school think that they're taking part in a Channel 4 documentary about behaviour. They're actually part of a secret eaters experiment to test Jane's theory. A's over here, B's over here, B, A and B. All the kids will be offered the same food, but they'll be divided into two groups. One group, we've called the effort group, will have healthy food displayed away from the food counter. If they want it, they'll have to make a conscious effort to walk over and pick it up. The other group, the easy group, will have healthy options displayed on the serving counter within arm's length. At the end of the experiment, we'll count up which group picks up the most pots of fruit and veg. So what are you expecting to see with the effort table? Research suggests that those children will be less likely to go to that table labelled healthy food, partly because it just takes a bit more effort but also because they're not going to want to be seen as being separate and different to the other children. And what about the other group, then? Well, the other group we're thinking of as being the easy group. Hopefully, they will just take that food because it's there, because it involves much less effort and because it's simply available to them. The lunch bell rings and our experiment is underway. So how many children will be tempted by the healthy-looking pots? Find out later if getting kids to eat their five a day could really be as easy as A, B, C. Coming up, there are more unsavoury surprises in store for Helena and Murray. It was better before, but it's got a lot worse now. Before you can effectively lose weight, you need to understand why you're putting it on in the first place. We've been spying on married couple Helena and Murray, who are trying to get their heads around their widening waistlines. Why have I got so fat? As the details of their deluded dining unfold... It's shocking. It is. They're finally facing up to the reality of their mindless eating habits. 
that bowl of cereal there contains two and a half thousand calories. Well, obviously, I've, I've been unaware. I've been blissfully unaware. Now Helena's up for another helping of home-cooked truths. I'm obviously doing something wrong, and I, you know, something you think, well, yeah, because you eat too many sweets or whatever. But it can't be just that. It's got to be more, more to it. Have you got any idea why you think you might be putting it on? Well, I'll put everything down to the menopause. Helena's at work, away from the scrutiny of the cameras, or so she thinks. It's munch time, and P.I. Cameron spies her emerging from a bakery. What did Helena order today? She ordered a turkey roll and a jam donut. Right, OK. Is that pretty much a normal order? Always. Busted. Perhaps this weight gain mystery isn't such a tough doughnut to crack after all. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Helena's sweet tooth is aching for another fix. That's quite a bit. Oh, I haven't got a tiny bit. Well, it's my bloody ice cream. That was my Saturday night treat. Hmm. Looks like Cold War could break out over that frozen pudding. <gasps> <laughs> ah, at last, a healthy-looking dessert, right next to a more tempting option. Oh, my God. When it comes to sweet treats, us Brits don't just take the biscuit, we'll demolish the whole pack with most of us chomping our way through 600 kilograms of biscuits in our lifetime. Go on, Helena. Well, if you've got to pick them up to clean under them, you might as well have one. You literally no. got through an entire packet of biscuits. Over the surveillance period, you got through 1,700 <laughs> calories worth of sweet foods. If you were to continue like that, over the course of a month, you'd be getting through the same number of calories as these 104 chocolate bars. I'm a bit gobsmacked. Lost for words, which isn't normal for me. But the sugar fix doesn't stop there. Helena likes to start the day with a cup of tea. With two sugars followed by another, also with two sugars. And another, well, you get the picture. Her skinny mocha is suddenly getting chubbier. Ten sugars. Helena is a sugar snaffler, and she's not alone. Sugar gives us instant energy, so provides a natural high. The problem is, when you have some, you usually want more. By eating three meals a day and snacking in between on foods high in protein, like nuts, you stand more chance of keeping the sugar cravings at bay. Let's ask Lynn what all those sugary drinks mean for you. Over the course of the surveillance, you got through around about 1,200 calories just in hot sugary drinks. You can't blame the menopause forever, I'm afraid, Lena, <laughs> no. but you can blame those sugars. Yeah. It's a common myth about the menopause and weight gain. Mm. As you get older, you don't need as many calories. Mm. Um, but also in women, the body fat distribution does change, so it goes on round the middle yeah. rather than being on the hips. So the actual overall weight gain, there isn't association. Really? We've rigged hidden cameras at a truck stop on the M25, where the full English breakfast is being served by the lorry load. And our heavyweight hauliers have been loading up on the free fried extras, courtesy of Secret Eaters. All these free upgrades require extra effort if these truckers are to clear this culinary course. Meet the speed fiends. This bloke's got a hefty haul, but he's short on time. Nothing for it but to floor the accelerator. And this one's scoffed and scarpered, leaving his scrap still steaming. This man's not taking any chances. If his meter runs out, he'll bolt with his breakfast butty. Cruising at a gentler pace are the news noshers. They know how to savour the journey from table to spare tyre. 
Mustn't forget the moppers. No pickup is too small for these conscientious diners. And no British breakfast would be complete without a consignment of condiments. Would you like some chips with your salt, sir? This breakfast club have certainly gone the extra mile. 72% of our hungry road hogs couldn't resist loading up on the free extras, with each of them clocking up the best part of 950 calories. So far in our instant room, Murray's mammoth grazing has come under scrutiny. I'd never ever believe that. It's now time to cast an eye over his final surveillance report. Murray said that as well as enjoying home-cooked food, he occasionally had a takeaway. Well, Murray, you, I mean, you're a, a very lucky mum because you, you, you've got a lady on hand who's cooking for you. So there's no need for you, really, to go out and buy anything when you're on the run or anything like that? Not really. Nah, no. I wouldn't say so. It's Wednesday lunchtime, and after a morning of DIY at his mum's, Murray's worked up an appetite. He seems to have taken an indirect route home. He's just parked up close to some shops. Better get out of the car, look. It looks like we're about to witness a spot of foul play. Dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Our intrepid investigator moves in for a closer look. And then Murray scurries back to the car with his chow. I didn't even realise I was that shape. Well, Murray's been to the fried chicken shop. He's bought three spicy deep fried chicken. And all these chips. Six hours later, and the Murray takeaway tour is back on. But this time, he doesn't take it away far. He devours his doner kebab in the driving seat. That's awful. This is the third takeaway Murray's had in 24 hours. Well, it was bad before, but it's got a lot worse now, isn't it? I didn't realise he was going twice in one day. I thought it might have been the occasional treat. And then you're sitting in the car and eating it, so you're hiding it from your wife. Yeah. If I went home with that, I know what would happen. I'd have a go at him. And you're choosing really bad food. Oh, Why? Because no. it, it, it makes you feel... It's, somewhere it's, not, it's the forbidden fruit. It's that type of mm. thing. Let's get some more facts from Lynn. So those takeaways that Murray is scoffing, mm. what does it actually mean? Murray, over the course of the 24 hours, you actually got through nearly 4,000 calories just in those takeaway meals. That's a lot. So I've, I've almost doubled my recommended calorific intake then. Just in the takeaways? Yeah, and then you've just, got yeah, right. Lena's food on top yeah. of it. It is horrifying. It's repulsive. Mm. It is frightening. Why is it frightening? Well, my health has deteriorated. And I'm thinking I must be fairly close to perhaps it packing up altogether. Something's going to give somewhere. For you, Helena, how do you feel about Murray it's... getting this big? I don't like it at all, because I think, you know, he's going to drop down dead. I'm going to get a call to say he's had a heart attack, he's dead. Never really thought of it that way. So with plenty of unpalatable evidence laid out before them, it's time for Helena and Murray to learn what the difference is between what they think they eat and what they really eat. Helena, according to your food diaries, you were getting through 1,740 calories a day, but during surveillance, you were actually getting through 2,900 calories a day. Oh, my God, really? Oh, that is bad. That's, that's double, almost. Yeah. On that basis, you could end up putting on around two stone in six months' time. Oh, my God. Really? No, 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 no. I'm sort of wearing a 16, and that's getting a little snug. I don't want to wear an 18 or 20 or whatever. Let's hear Murray's statistics. Murray, according to your food diaries, you are getting through around 2,730 calories a day, which is still more than the average yeah, man. Right. Yeah. But during surveillance, you got through 6,000 calories a day. Oh, I have a knife. 
Miss Murray, this has really serious implications. Currently, your weight is putting your health at risk. You're in the obese category. Right. You carry on like that. In six months' time, you're going to be in the morbidly obese category. Right. You're really going to increase your risk of heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, and also the effect it's having on your joints. Well, I was wondering why I couldn't run 100 yards. Well, now I know, obviously. How did that happen? Gluttony. Basically. It's terrible. It, okay. It? I just need to ask you, mm -hmm. Helena, are you a secret eater? I definitely am. I must be, yes, for sure. Murray, are you a secret eater? I think I'm the most secretive eater there's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> now that Helena and Murray have seen the true extent of their secret eating, they've agreed to follow a healthy eating plan. Murray needs to cut down his calorie intake from 6,000 to 2,500 calories a day. He'll have to significantly reduce his portion sizes and ditch the takeaways in favour of food prepared at home. He'll also need to get more active. I'm going to sort myself out and uh, lose some weight. Helena needs to reduce her current 2,900 calorie consumption to 1,800 calories a day. She'll have to take healthy lunches with her to work and swap sugar in her tea for sweeteners. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that fat woman and, and hopefully stop it right now. These simple changes should radically reduce Helena and Murray's waistlines. If you'd like to change your eating habits and for more help and tips, then visit us at channel4.com forward slash secret eaters. We'll be catching up later to find out how they got on. Maxie, where's that gone? Oh no, he's found it. Earlier, we set up a secret experiment at this South London school. These Year 8 kids think they're taking part in a documentary about behaviour, but with the help of Professor Jane Ogden, a specialist in children's eating habits, we're actually testing a theory that kids will eat healthy food if it's presented to them in the right way. It's based on what supermarkets do to us all the time. They can get us to buy whatever they want us to buy simply by putting it in the right place. And there's no reason, really, why you can't do that with healthy foods as well as unhealthy foods. A recent survey revealed that fewer than 20% of children aged between 5 to 15 eat the recommended five portions of fruit and veg a day. Could this secret science experiment provide a practical solution to turning that figure around? There's a whole literature on what we call mindless eating. And people often mindlessly eat the wrong foods because the crisps and the chips and the, and the biscuits and the chocolate is just there. And there's no reason why you can't use mindless eating in a good way. So if you put healthy food there, then they'll take that because it's there. On one side of the canteen, the pots of fruit and vegetables have been set up as a healthy option away from the regular food choices. And on the other side of the canteen, the healthy options are within reach and integrated with the rest of the menu. So which group picked up the most pots? It's time to come clean to our unsuspecting young guinea pigs and find out. You were all told that you were taking part in a film about schools and behaviour. You weren't. You've actually been taking part in a secret eaters experiment. <laughs> for Channel 4. What we did was on this side, you had to make a bit of effort to go and get your fruit and vegetables. On this side, we tried to make it as easy for you as possible so that you could just get it when you fancied it without any effort. And what we were hoping was that you would take a lot more fruit and vegetables. Time to dish out the results. First up, the group who had to walk over to the healthy pots. What we have here are your empty pots, which is 22. And what about the group who had a healthy option within arm's reach? You ate even more. In fact, they ate an impressive 39 more pots. Which is 77% more, nearly twice as much 
as that lot over there. Amazing result, Jane. I have to say, respect to the science. That was absolutely <laughs> incredible. So what does it actually prove? Well, it proves that really children will eat fruit and vegetables and healthily if you give it to them. Kids uh, get more fruit and vegetables if they're nicely put out and if they're right next to them. I would definitely recommend the fruit and vegetables to my friend because it was really tasty. Coming up... The moment of truth. The secret eater's scales are back. You sure the scales are right? Five weeks ago, married couple Helena and Murray told us they were stumped as to why they were lumping on the pounds. It mystifies me that I have gained so much weight so quickly. I eat small meals, but I still pile on the pounds. So we put cameras in their home and instructed private investigators to tell them wherever they went. Two large barbecue Texas pizzas, bacon, meat, cheese on that. We presented the forensic food facts to a shell-shocked Helena and Murray in our incident room. Well, this is just a snapshot of some of the things you've been eating. Really? This is phenomenal. Oh, I'll take you on the chin, don't I? Really? Which one now? <laughs> it's now time to see if they've managed to change their ways. First thing I do when I come home, I have got rid of all the rubbish out of the fridge and the cupboards. And I just empty the lot into the bin. Now, instead of sugar, I've replaced that with sweeteners. And it was a bit hard at first, because it's a bit bitter. But now I'm used to it, and it just tastes normal to me. A little bit of cold turkey to start with, but now I'm enjoying the lifestyle, if you like. Fruit may substitute a bag of crisps or celery could uh, replace a bag of chips. Be more active. I mean, I used to sort of occasionally, reluctantly might go out with the dog, but now I go out every day. <laughs> Even with Murray's with me, he'll say, slow down, slow down. I'll say, now, come on, let's go, come on, go. So I've got more energy. Come, mate. I've rejoined the gym. It's it's actually easy, easy now uh, to walk past the takeaway. Well, I, I've done it a couple of times and waved at the the staff in there. Ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. The moment of truth. The final weigh-in is still to come. But remember, it's not just Helena and Murray's secret eating we've been spying on. The Festival of Flavours on offer at the local food market makes it the perfect place for plating up and putting it away. So in a stall-or-nothing break for the border, we've set up our hidden cameras on this burrito stall to see which peckish punters will be carried away on a Mexican wave and fill till they spill. <laughs> this hombre is filling his burrito with gusto and pretty much everything else. Now you've got to try and wrap it. I think he took too much. But he still managed to wrap up his whopper. Perfect. You only find burritos that big in the Gulp of Mexico. Let's see how the girls handle their burritos. Oh, my God. That is, like, massive. Ooh, she's struggling to get her hands around that one. Yes. That's a pitiful attempt. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> bad. Not bad. You're not squeezing it. You need to squeeze it. I know, I'm afraid of the <laughs> Oops, a little spillage. Don't worry, it happens to everyone. <laughs> Remember, size doesn't matter, girls. It's what you do with it. Enjoy! Right, now you've got to try and wrap it up. And as for this head honcho, he's going to need a bigger poncho. Nicely done. I think we can safely say that's a wrap. Back in Hornchurch, and it's the moment of truth for Helena and Murray. Since wising up to their secret eating, they've been following a healthy eating plan given to them by our dietitian Lynn. 
Each one of those tiramisu pots contained 1,295 <laughs> calories. I ate three of those. If they've stuck to the new plan, Helena and Murray should notice a dramatic loss in weight. Ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, the moment of truth. First to step onto the scales is Helena, who five weeks ago weighed in at 12 stone 6 pounds. The stone mark there, like, looks like 11, 4 or 5. Right? <laughs> An impressive 1 stone 2 pound weight loss. Well chuffed with that. Definitely. Well, That's uh, excellent. Well, well done, Lee. Well, thank I've, you. I've got to emulate that now, haven't I? Yeah, go on. Will Murray be as successful? What's that saying then? He started out at 17 and a half stone. 16... 10. Yeah, smashing. Well done. Yeah, I say I don't mess about, do I? Murray's lost almost a stone in weight. Between them, Helena and Murray have shed almost two stone. When I walk past the shop window and I see my reflection, I think, Mm. You don't look as big as you did six weeks ago or whatever long it was. And, I, you know, I feel better about myself. It just shows you a bit of willpower can do. I'll be approaching 60 with BMI, phenomenally high, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. It wasn't looking good. Uh, and I think I just nicked it in time. And what does the future hold for Helena and Murray? I hope the future holds that we'll carry on the way we are, getting sl slimmer and healthier, and hopefully we'll live to a ripe old age. Well, I've just got a zip in me, it's hard to explain. A lot of it, I think, comes from up the gym. You've got the adrenaline and all the endorphins, and I'm like that perpetually now. I was a secret eater, but not anymore. Next time, engaged couple Kelly and Tracy want to slim down before their big day. I don't think my diet is worse than the average person. And in an early vow, they agree to go under surveillance. Surprise, girls! <laughs> but are these blushing brides keeping their secret eating habits from themselves and each other? Oh, my God! <laughs> she was eating these. That's bad. Very bad. Next tonight on 47, recent world events that have shaped the rising price of food. Your shopping basket has jumped 25%. Well, next here, when Bolton Albert Holes welcomed a local hero with open arms, red carpet treatment for their stand-up legend, Mr. Peter Kay.